In this tutorial in CyberLink Power Director, we're going to give you the first of several overview tutorials related to a new tool available for 365 subscribers. It's a completely new room in their terminology, which allows you to design intros to your videos. But more than that, it has lots of intros already designed as templates that are available on the PowerDirector website. So you can use hundreds and hundreds of these to build your own intro, or you can take your finished intro and add it there for someone else to use. We're going to begin our look at this new room and all the tools that come with this in this tutorial. So to get there, we're now going to click on the second icon from the top, which is a new one called Video Intro Room. When we click there, we see two items. We see the thumbnails on the right half of the left screen, and then we see the categories on the other side. If you look at the file count, you notice there are hundreds and hundreds of elements that are available for you in each of these collections. So there's lots to pick from. So when you look at the icon, you also notice it, it will show you the duration of that template. So let's just click on Modern for an example. And here are some of the ones that we have. If I hover over any of these, it's going to play it. So I'm going to be able to see a preview of it. Or I can click on it once and I can play it on the right side in the preview panel. So those are two ways that I can look at it before I actually decide if I want to use it. To begin using it, I double click on it and then I will receive a message. It will say update timeline data. And it's pulling things into my system. And this is the template that I have. Let's look at some of the tools that we can use to edit this template. We won't get through all of them in this tutorial, but we'll get you started. The leftmost tool is a clock that relates to duration. How long can the template be? My default, when I click on it, it tells me what it was. It's 10 seconds. And many of the ones that I've seen so far are 10 seconds long. But notice the text that you have in this particular pop-up screen. You can make it only 50% longer than the original. So in this case, the maximum is going to be 15 seconds. If I click on the up arrow for seconds for length, you notice it stops at 15. And the minimum for any of them, no matter how long they are originally, is 5 seconds. So if I go on the down arrow to try to shrink it in duration, 5 seconds is my bottom line. If you had one that was 20 seconds long to start with, obviously you could make it as long as 30 seconds, 10 plus 50 percent, but the, the minimum would still be five seconds. I'm not going to change the duration, but this is where you go to do that. The next element we have when we click on here is replace background media. Now, in this case, my background media happens to be the panel on the right with video. And let's assume I want to replace their video with my video. So I click on that icon and I have two options. The first is to import from my own hard drive, my own files. And the second, as a subscriber, is to download media from Shutterstock or Getty Images. I'm going to import from a hard drive in this case. And I'll pull the file in and I'll take uh, this file here. And we'll use this one instead. So there's my file. Now immediately it pops up a trim menu and a trim screen. Why? Because my video isn't exactly the same length as the 10 seconds. It's longer. So basically it's going to ask me what, which 10 seconds of my video do I want to use? And in this case, I can't change the beginning point or end point, but I can slide this around to see what kind of 10 second subset of this video I want to use. Let's say I want to use this part here, and I settle on it and click on OK. If I want to change my mind or edit that later, I can click again on the scissors icon to trim, and it will take me back to the screen I was at a moment ago, and I can modify the 10 second area in this case, or whatever duration I've set for my video. I'm going to click on OK. The other thing you can do with a video clip is you can crop it. So that's my fourth icon from the left. I'll click on that. And here we cannot crop, zoom, and pan, but we can crop. So I can change 
the size that we're using. I can change the location. And then when I'm finished, I can either click on reset on the left side or cancel or OK. And I'll do that. And so now we have a cropped video in our example. The next icon with the three circles is to apply a LUT. And when we're using that in this case, one of the things that they do in this uh, new way of working is it pops up a completely separate window. And I'll click on that. And in this case, the window is off the recording screen. I'll drag it on. And it will look for the LUTs that are available in your copy of PowerDirector. If you don't want a LUT, you can click on the No Effect. Or you can click on the All Content and choose a subcategory. I'll take one here. Let's take a Bright in Area 11. And I will use that to modify the look and feel of my video. Again, you can change the strength of the LUT. Uh, you, can you can switch from one to another and experiment. Or you can turn them all off by clicking on the No Effect. I'm going to close my pop-up window about my LUTs. But that's how you can apply a LUT. A rather new technique. I think we'll probably see some of these things going on in the next iteration of PowerDirector for all users. The next one is a T, and that's for text. We'll click on that. Now we have two options. We can add normal text or motion graphic. Let's look at each one. I'm going to click on the Add Text. That will take me to a screen where I have a click to edit, so I can move my text around. And when I double click on it, it will open up a panel. The first element will, will allow me to change the color of the text. It starts out here with black. Let me go to a green. I'll click on OK. I can change whether I want a border around the text. Let's add one. We'll change the color of that to gray. And I can also add a shadow. I can do bold and italic. And I can do left, center, or right. I can change the font family I'm going to use. Let's go to this one. And of course, I can change the font size. So these are some of the options that we have. I'm going to double click on this and we'll just call this yummy. And those are some quick ways we've edited our added text. Now, if you notice, we have a green line below the bottom. And what that does with a darker greenish blue, it gives you your in animation and out animation and duration. And for this particular template, both of them are fade. So what, I, if I, what can I do if I want to change it? Well, that's what the second icon is for, the person running. That's my animation icon. I click on that. And it's going to give me some options on the text. Now, again, it brings a new pop-up screen off my recording screen. And let's do Amplify Horizontal for my in animation. I'll shrink that down. I'll do an out animation. And let's do a Amplify Vertical. I'll close my window. And notice, now when I hover over the dark blue-green, Amplify Horizontal is my in animation and Amplify Vertical is my out animation. And so I'm going to take and, and uh, let's play this and see what it looks like. There it is appearing. And the animation and the LUT and everything is working so far. So that's your standard text when you add it to one of these templates. We're going to stop that. And we also note that we do have some audio. So I'm going to turn my audio on. And later we'll look at how you can change audio, if indeed that's what you want to do. But this was the audio that came with this particular template. Now we're not quite done with text. I want to show you a couple of other things that we can do. When I click on Add Text, you can also add a motion graphics title. So that will open up another pop-up screen, take you to all the motion graphic titles that you have available in your copy of PowerDirector. Uh, let me just take a simple one here and click on it and click on import. And now it will take that and it will add it. Again, it gives me an editing screen that's off of my normal capture screen here. And I can move in here and change this to whatever I like. And I can preview it and move it around, resize it. But that's what we're going to see if we look at a motion graphic title. So. These are the ways you can modify the settings. When you click on it, it'll be activated. 
The third thing about titles is you can take obviously the existing titles and edit them as well. Now this one here, when I click on it, I'm going to find it's motion graphic because it says motion graphic settings. When I click on the title down here and double click, I'm going to have my abbreviated editing options. And so that means it's a standard title. Again, you can delete, you can edit, We've covered that in other lessons. So those are the two kinds of titles that you can edit, add, or remove using this tool. And if you want to delete one, you highlight it and click on the trash can and it will remove it from the template. In the next exercise, we're going to continue our survey of the video intro designer and the new style of editing tools that come with it. So we'll fill you in on more next time.